Hey friends, thanks for listening and for watching. Welcome to another episode of Amplify Your Mindset. I love saying that. Um, hey, I am super excited about the show today, but I also wanna remind you, if you've never read my book, please check it out. It's called Leverage Your Mindset. You can pick it up online uh, or from wherever books are stole, uh, sold, uh, from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Target, and Walmart. And if you wanna enhance your growth mindset, from sleeping better, uh, reducing stress, uh, working on your confidence, self-esteem, and much, much more. Check out my mobile app. It's really simple. Just go to your app store and search the title, Ricky Kalman. All right, so let's get on with the show today. Uh, as I said, I'm super excited. Meetings and Conventions Magazine called Steve Miller the idea man for his unconventional, edgy, no-spin approach to marketing and branding. He is the author of eight books. His newest release, Stealing Genius, uh, is out now, the, the uh, seven levels of adaptive innovation. Uh, Steve's speaking and consulting clients have ranged from entrepreneurs to Fortune 100 corporations, including Procter & Gamble, Caterpillar, Boeing, uh, Airplane, uh, Starbucks, uh, Philips Electronics, and the prestigious TED Conference. His background is eclectic. He is the son of the co-inventor of the A-Track tape player. He played on the PGA Tour, worked in the copper mines of Arizona, and was a stuntman in Hollywood, which all means uh, he can't hold a job. Now nah, he can. He's an incredible person. Uh, this all explains why he brings uh, a slightly bent perspective on marketing and branding. Um, I, I want to call him a friend because I've gotten to know him very, very quickly. So my friend, uh, Steve Miller, welcome to the program. Hey, Ricky. Nice to see you, uh, man. How was that intro? That <laughs> intro, I'll tell you what, I can't wait to hear the guy who's going to be talking. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you've been doing this a, a few years, uh, eight books, uh, the newest book, Stealing Genius. Excited yeah. about that. Um, I've gotten Can to know you. Very, Can I show uh, my book? Yeah, abs absolutely. Show the book. Show the book. Show the orange book. Yes, because we're going to talk about orange? branding a little bit. Notice, notice a, uh, there's a pattern going here. Yeah. So if, you're, if you're watching yeah. on. Thank you. Yeah, if you're watching thank, on. Thank, thank you for, for uh, having me on. Um, it's good you to know, see since you. You, so, since you and I have met, we've, we've had some yeah. really great conversations. I'll tell you, that's, that, <laughs> that's been the fun part of this whole thing. And, you know, it's, uh, uh, you know, we've said that, you know, we, we, you know, I'm a past member of the National Speakers Association. I was a member there for a very, very long time. Um, but uh, as everybody knows in NSA, that the, it's the connections that you make. Mm -hmm. uh, through the convention, through the convention, and through through the association, and I've made some amazing connections over the years. And you are my most recent new connection, which is, uh, and you and I just hit it off, just smashing right out of the box. So you're a good guy. I love your brand. I love your ideas. Uh, I I've taken notes in our calls. You've you've definitely inspired me, and I want to inspire our listeners today. So if you're listening to this podcast, you can also watch it from my site, rickycalman.com, or you can do it from the mobile app, which I talked about in the beginning of the show. A uh, little extra plug there. But, I got it. I got uh, it. I read your book. I've, I've got the app. I've, I've been, yeah, I've used it. Thank you. So let's talk about you, your brand. You do have an eclectic background, um, and it's really cool how you've taken the, your expertise or your experience on the things and really shared with organizations about branding, how to really excel. Uh, your brand is about orange. I mean, everything is an orange. And you also co-brand co everything with your wife, Kay Miller, who was also a guest on Amplify yeah. Your Mindset. Yeah. Um, but let's let's talk a little bit about branding. What what got into your mindset, if you will, to go this direction in, in, in your career? Well, um, you know, like, you know, you talked about what I did back in my wilderness years, uh, you know, searching for something to do <laughs> that, that was going to, uh, you know, I couldn't make it, you know, the PGA Tour, that was actually my dream was was to be out there. Uh, I was out there for a couple of years. My mom never even knew that I was out there. She That's how that's how famous I was and how successful <laughs> I was. Um, but, you know, and, and I bounced around. And what what ended up happening was uh, I got into sales, which was an, which kind of was an easy place to go. 
um, uh, that if, if you can go sell something, you can work in pretty much any industry and stuff. And I had, uh, uh, I was successful at doing that. But while I was in sales, which is the face to face, you know, and getting the order type of thing, I became very uh, fascinated by the from the marketing side, which uh, uh, was was kind of the you know marketing is kind of the it's the fir it's the first connection, you mm -hmm. know, that your prospects have with you really, uh, you know, whether it's at, you know it, like your website right now if people are searching they go onto the website they see you that's marketing. OK, and I, I became very fascinated by the fact that uh, most companies were not good at marketing. Uh, and a big part of marketing is the branding part and the branding part. I call it the, it's, it's your promise to the marketplace. That's what branding is all about, uh, that that you are you are making a promise to the marketplace of what you stand for, who you are, what you're going to deliver, you know, something like that. and then the marketplace decides whether you live up to uh, your promise or down from your promise or something like that. And, and, and they, they either uh, validate uh, your, your promise to the marketplace or they prove that you are a charlatan. And uh, uh, that's, that's what's really cool about branding. Uh, and so a big part of uh, Uncopyable, uh, which is the, you know, my, my first book on branding, uh, was to help companies to be able to make promises to the marketplace that number one they could stand up to, but also number two that were, were that were memorable, that uh, um, would help people to rem remember you. I, I, I've often said that the purpose of marketing is to be on the mind of the prospect when the prospect is ready to buy. That's the purpose of marketing. And that, uh, and another way of putting it is that when the lightning bolt comes out of the sky and strikes somebody in the middle of the head and they go, oh my gosh, I got a problem, I got a challenge, I got a project, I've got, I've got pain, I've got, a, I've got aspiration and I want to, uh, uh, I, I've got an itch that I need to scratch. Do they think of you first? Do they think of you second? Do they think of you at all? And to me, uh, it's, uh, that's what marketing is all about. It's a, it's a, a, I love it. I love working with companies and people on, on helping them to, uh, uh, be better marketers and to separate themselves from the competition. And that's, that's where the uncopyable series came from, mm -hmm. you know, stealing genius, which is, you know, you mentioned my latest book and, uh, you know, in Kay's, Kay's book, uncopyable sales secrets, same thing. Let's talk about uncopyable for a minute, because I love your definition of why people should create an uncopyable brand you well why is that's exactly it it's why should people do business with you mm -hmm. uh that that's what the whole purpose is all is, is all about uh um you know a good friend of mine dan kennedy uh you know one of the top marketers in the world he he asked the question he says why should i do business with you versus every other option available including uh, d just staying with what I'm currently doing or do nothing at all. Why should I choose you? People do not buy from us because we are similar to the competition. That's something that people really need to get in their head. They, they, that they, they buy from us because, because we are different in some way. Now I just got off a phone call, a consulting call with a, a client. And we were talking about that, that they, they really stress and they're a new client, uh, and that on their website, they talk about they have the best quality products and they have the best customer service. And, uh, and I, and I said, you know, I really hate to be bring pain to you, but you know what, that's exactly what your competition is saying. They're saying that they have the best quality. They have the best customer service. And in the marketplace, if your, if your customers, your prospects don't see any difference between your company, the product and or service that you are, you are offering. If they don't see any difference between them from a quality, from a service perspective or anything like that, then it all boils down to price. Yeah. How, much, how much are you charging for it? Right. And, um, and, and I, don't want, I don't want to compete on price. You don't want to compete on price. Uh, and my clients don't want to compete on price. So we have to go find that differentiator that uh, uh, that is um, it. It is specific. 
we're able to prove that that we are specific. We, we're able to prove that we are different. It's very specific. It's valuable to the customer. Uh, and it's it's um, you know it's defensible. Uh, you know, it's like you're able to you're able to say, okay, here's what we are, and then you're able to put a moat around it, so that mm -hmm. uh, it would be hard to copy, uh, uh, hard for somebody to to beat you at that. And so, and that's what we need to do as marketers. And branding is a huge part of that. Is a huge part of that. No, it's unmatched by anybody. It's not just about. It's about creating something that nobody else can cop copy, like you or or talking yeah, about. either they can't copy or they won't copy. And if they copy it, it'll just say, well, you know, they're, you're just copying what the original did. If you know what, if you do it right and you're able to get the marketplace to see you as the one who's delivering that, see you mm -hmm. as the creator of that, then if the competition tries to copy you, uh, you know, the, the customers all go, oh, you're just, you know, you're, you're just right. co copying Ricky. I, I think that's a challenge for all of us. I think what you've just said is a challenge no matter what business you're in. I mean, nobody it, says it's easy. <laughs> no, but I think that we, we, you know, it's that's that's the whole, you know, the whole point of growing is embracing change and embracing opportunities and embracing ways to become so irreplaceable that nobody can copy you in what you do. Yeah. Yeah. And, and often, uh, it often boils down to intangibles. Um, okay. It often boils down to the experience that you are delivering to to the customer, to the marketplace that they just can't get anywhere else. Uh, mm -hmm. And because uh, uh, experience is not customer service, uh, it, it, experience is is everything that touches the customer. Everything that mm -hmm. that, that, that every touch point. Jan Carlson, when he was president of Scandinavian Airlines, he wrote a fantastic book called Moments of Truth. That's what he called. It. He says, every time your customer has some type of touch point with you, that's a moment of truth. And, and the way I describe it is that you make a promise to the marketplace. Like, for example, I have a client in Cleveland that's a, uh, they're an HVAC distributor. Distributors, they, 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 there's, it's so hard for them to differentiate themselves from another distributor, right? because they're all selling the same stuff so the way they're dif differentiating themselves is by they they have own they are owning the word relentless so that's their promise their promise is we will, we will be relentless in helping you be successful we will be relentless in delivering on time we, everything we do mm -hmm. you know that, that uh, you know has anything to do with our customers we are relentless in that and so they make that that's their big promise to the marketplace. And so every single touch point has to reinforce that. And every touch point, then here's what happens. When we make a promise to the marketplace, and then we have we have a moment of truth with them, one of three things is happening because there are they, they come in and they have a perception. They have a perception of what your branding promise is to them. Okay. And it's right here. And if you if, if, if in that moment of truth you deliver what they believe to be your branding promise then you are maintaining what they think about you. Mm -hmm. If you are actually doing better, you might actually enhance what they what they think about your promise, okay? But if you don't, they are then they then you are diminishing what they see you know, mm -hmm. in you. It's a it's and every single touch point is going to impact people. You know, it's interesting. We we've been talking here and we yet have talked about a specific product uh, or service itself, we've talked about, like you said, the touch points, the experience, and then you can refer that back to Disney, the Ritz Carltons, the Four Seasons, the people that create the experience. They're selling a hotel room. They're selling an adventure mm -hmm. uh, or a movie or, or uh, you know, a, a character, but they create such an experience of a, like you said, a touch point. All right, let's pivot for a little quick, quick second. Oh, let me, let me, let me share two pivot. quick examples. Yes. Oh, oh no, you need to take a break. No, 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 no. Well, I was going to say, let I want to talk about Stealing Genius and what is Stealing Genius without giving away the book. Uh, I actually, when, when I read it, I, I actually was like, oh my gosh, that's, that's so simple. And why am I not doing oh, yeah. that? Some of the things I was, you know, you, you, you and I share a commonality of making notes or, or using little uh, thumb uh, uh, post-its, you know, on pages and not, anyway, so let, let's, let's talk about that. What is Stealing Genius? 
Well, stealing genius is that um, years ago when my dad was, uh, you know, with doing the eight track, um, he and his partner Bill Lear of Learjet, uh, um, they were they wanted to build the product in Japan, and but the the problem back then, back in the early '60s, was uh, made in Japan was crap. So they needed to make sure that their product had a high enough quality to be able to come back and sell to the consumer nation, the United States. And so they hired a guy named W. w. Edwards Deming, who uh, ultimately became the basically the father of the quality movement. Okay, he created total quality management uh, uh, philosophy, and is very very famous in in Japan. In fact, uh, the the big the highest award in in quality in Japan is called the Deming Award. Deming, you know, used, uh, my dad would have me hang out with these guys, uh, and. Uh, and and so I uh, had to listen to three old old men, uh, and and Deming used to talk about quality, and he he, he and he said there are two. He said there's a really important foundation of of quality, and that is benchmarking. You know, you want to benchmark to you know to see how you're doing or to get new ideas or something like that. He said, but there were two kinds of benchmarking. One is intrinsic and one is extrinsic. Intrinsic benchmarking is, you know, we're in, we're in our box. Everybody says you, you got to get out of the box. Well, what the hell is the box? Uh, nobody's actually ever said what, what the box is, but the box is your world. It's, it's, if you are in, like I was just talking to somebody who was in the manufacturing industry and they, their box is the manufacturing industry box. And all of all of the customers, all of the competitors, all of the trade magazines, the trade shows, everything that is related to the manufacturing industry is in that box. And, and so we're all in our own box. And we're with all these other people and, 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 and companies and things like that. And so we look at them. We're constantly looking at them. And we, and we think we're getting ideas from them on how to uh, market, how to how to create a product, how to separate ourselves from the competition or, or, or something like that. But in fact, well, all we're doing is what is, is that intrinsic benchmarking is that uh, we're looking at them and, and, and we're saying, oh, I like what they're doing. We can do that. We can do that too. We can do it maybe even a little bit better. Well, guess, guess what those guys are doing? They're looking at you. Okay, so that's intrinsic. And really all intrinsic benchmarking is is you just have to see, you have to see where you where you stand compared to the competition okay you got to make okay. sure you have the minimum viable product that's out there that's being expected out there in the marketplace but if you want to get new ideas deming said you have to do extrinsic you have to get out of the box go visit other boxes you know if you're in manufacturing i told these guys in man you know the manufacturing you know box today, I said, you guys got to get out and you got to study retail. You have to study uh, um, the food industry, healthcare, you, you know, uh, travel, uh, you know, hotels, something like that. Stop, stop looking at your competition. Cause I showed them the pictures of their homepage on their website and, and the homepages of their top three competitors. They, they were almost identical, right? Yeah, and, and what do you think the main color was? And, I, and boy, I hate to say this to you. Uh, the main color. Uh, the main color of all four of them. What's behind you? Blue. I was going to say blue. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. why you're wearing orange. Yeah. That's I IBM blue. That's where that came from. Yeah. That's that's why everything is blue. If, you know, and I and and uh, you know, if you go to a technology show. Uh, and you walk down the first, if you're allergic to blue, you'll be dead in the first aisle yeah. of a trade show, you know? So, so that's what that's, that uh, you, you have to go out and get ideas from somewhere else and bring it back to your world. And, and then it's brand new. Interesting. So you, you know, and I discussed this before and I've noticed as I've gone to other businesses become more observant of what they're doing and what I like them, but they were not in the same business. I mean, from restaurants to retail, to car experiences, things yep. like that. I I've actually been since you and I've met and I've read the book, I I've actually found myself not looking at within my world, looking at outside the world and how I can bring that knowledge back to mine and make it so different. Um, 
I, I love the, your 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 philosophy to do do the opposite of what everybody else is doing. Right, uh, and that's been my kind of my philosophy since day one. When people think of me as a hypnotist, I'm like, well, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the opposite of what you think of. I'm just the complete opposite of the experience of what you might have of being a hypnotist. Now, granted, that was what I looked at like when I first started, and then really shortly after, I rebranded everything to be the opposite of that stereotype. Um, I'll give you an example. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Okay, the National Speakers Association that we've talked about, um, uh, one of the, uh, when I first joined it, uh, back in like 1987 or something like that. Uh, and then for many years at the conventions, they would teach you how to create marketing materials, you know, brochures, one sheets and, 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 and things like that. And after a few years, guess what? All the speakers Everybody's had saying. the exact same stuff and, and, and custom clients were complaining. They were saying, we can't tell you guys apart. Right. And right. what we right. did, you know, and, and they, you know, these are four colors, four color stuff and really nice. And they were all beautiful and stuff like that. And so Kay and I said, well, what's the exact opposite? Crap, right. whatever. If it looks like crap, you know, then that's that's that's. So what we would do is when somebody would, would contact us, we would get and we had we had a stack of testimonial letters, you know, from from our past clients, we would just make, we would just make a, a big pile of our testimonial letters. We would put it in a crappy cardboard box and we would just put on here. Here's, here's our brochure. All right. And we just mailed that to people and people, they call up and they go, this is unbelievable. This is, this is brilliant. You know? <laughs> yeah. I used to do that back when I first started. It's strange. I, I used to, uh, Did it work? I, this is before websites. Did yeah. I mean, I would, I would just send people a, a folder. I did. I mean, again, I'm not agreeing with everything you just said, but I mean, like, as far as like every time you said, like I did it, but that it's ironic. Um, I, when I first started, first started in the nineties, um, this is really before I had an established website, I would just copy every letter and go up to Kinko's at the time. Yeah. And I would just come up with packets of 30 or 40 letters and I would just send them those. Yeah. And then, and then somebody actually, uh, I hired a marketing person and they actually said, no, only use a testimonial and put their name under it. So it's, it's funny. Maybe I should start doing that again. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, send I, I, met, send, I mentioned Dan send. Kennedy, you know, he, he asked me one time, uh, not too long ago, he said, what did you do the very at the beginning of your business that worked really, really well? And I said, well, I used to do a fat mail to, uh, top prospects and it would be an envelope and I had a five cent sugar daddy inside. Mm. And, you know, everybody has to open that, right? Cause there's something inside. And, uh, and, and I had, uh, and then I would offer a free audio tape. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was it. That was the extent of it. I had like a 49% response rate, you know, from, you know, from, from doing that. And, and it basically built my business. You know, and he said, so you're still doing it, right? <laughs> did you ever, did you ever do the dollar letter? I never did the dollar letter. So never for listeners that. out there, so the, the dollar letter, you might've been aware. You, so you're basically writing a letter and in the letter is actually a dollar or $10. Or if you really want to get somebody's attention, you know, you put, you know, whatever you want. And it's like, you know, I know there's a dollar in here. It, you know, it, I just want to get your attention. That's all yeah. this is. Yeah. I just wanted to, now that I have your attention, yeah. let me tell you about what I do. And, and I, and I've, I did the dollar letter a couple of times, or I would do um, uh, a, a, a letter with a gift card for lunch mm -hmm. somewhere at a mm -hmm. local restaurant. If I was trying to get somebody's attention locally. But yeah, Dan Kennedy is an incredible guy. I, 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 I've been very fortunate to uh, sit in the audience many, many times and learn a lot from his marketing guru. He and I, he and I uh, argue about which of us is the bigger curmudgeon. Curmudgeon. That's funny. That's funny. We're both cranky. So. so what do you think the biggest mistakes businesses or people make in their marketing or their brand? I know we talked about that a little bit here, but, but I guess, is there, is there like one mistake? Like if you could come out, because I, we talked, we did talk about people copying everybody else and the, all the brochures look the same or their website or their colors. I, is there one mistake that people make? Um, yeah. And that, that number one thing is, uh, they're boring. Okay. Okay. Um, I think that, 
when when we develop marketing pieces and stuff like that, we think we have to sound like a a, a freaking college textbook. Uh, uh, you know, and oh, you know, oh, Steve Miller, you know, you know, he has, you know, he's talked to so many, you know, clients, blah, 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 you know, and it, and it's and it's all, uh, it, it's it's just uh, um, white noise, uh, mm -hmm. and the you know we we, it, we think we have to be professional, uh, and I'm you know, and professional is boring, uh, and and I've always I've always felt like like. People, people need to find it interesting and useful. Anything I send to people has to be interesting and useful. Uh, even if I'm trying to sell them my uh, speaking or consulting or some or, or product products or, or courses or anything like that, what I'm sending them needs to be interesting and useful. And if you can throw a little humor in there and make it a little bit funny, fun, that's even better. Uh, it's, okay, I'm actually better. writing. I'm actually writing this down. I'll go back and listen to this later. But I like the fact that the challenge or the question that you ask yourself is this interesting and useful to wh whatever I'm doing. So the next letter, the next email, the next package, the next book that I might send to a client, whatever it may be, is this interesting and useful and to get their attention? And, and you know what? The number one way to know if you're being if it's interesting or useful is it about them. Go to websites again. Like I was, like I just got off the phone with these guys, and I showed them their website and the, the other three competitors, and I said, "What is each one of these home pages pages about?" It's about that company. Yeah. Why isn't it about the person who's coming to find and and showing up on your page? Right. See, it's like you know, there's there's and I uh, what's his name? Blank, I'm blanking blanking on his name. Famous uh, advertiser years ago, years ago. Uh, in in his book, he said he said our objective is to join the conversation that's already going on in the customer's mind. Oh, all right. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Oh, wait, so say, say that one more time because yeah. I, I actually I our love objective that thought is to join the conversation that's already going on in the customer's mind. Mm. So if somebody is hiring speakers, I'm I'm actually uninterested in knowing that they hire speakers and and oh gee I'm a speaker. No, what I want to know is why do they hire speakers? What what is on their mind right. when they are hiring a speaker? And in my opinion, is is that most people who are hiring a speaker, for example, and this applies to any industry, okay? They're they're going they're going. Man, I I got to be careful. I I can't hire somebody who sucks. All right. right. I can't hire somebody <laughs> who is who is a pain in the butt to work with. You know, I you know, I want to get a promotion. So, yeah. you know, boy, I hope I hope the speaker makes me look good. And and that became kind of what we the message that we were sharing with people for years was that Steve's going to be the easiest guy you ever worked with. Uh, and Steve is going to make you look good. Yeah, we would tell people we're, we're going to make you a rock star. So, and again, uh, I'm pl I'm applying as I'm listening to you and how this we're talking about the speaking business, but I'm I'm seeing immediately how this applies to somebody in the financial or insurance space, somebody that's in the computer space, tech space, whatever it may be, food industry, mm -hmm. uh, whatever whatever industry you're on, you're in. Think about how you solve. How you are the the problem solver to your problem clients. solver, and you and you're going to make them look good. Yeah, they'll make them. And I would do stuff like that, like like for example, if I if if I had a great case study uh, with a client, uh, and this is and I've done this in multiple industries with multiple clients. Okay, manufacturing, you know, all you know, a lot of manufacturing companies. Okay, we'll we'll have a project that we'll do. Okay, and I'll say, all right, well, let's 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 write a, a case study. So now we write a case study. And then we, 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 the case study goes on the website. We use the case study kind of like the, you know, the testimonial letters, things like that. But then when to, to also help that person be a rock star is we contact uh, the industry publications. And we'll say, hey, we have this case study from this company of doing this thing. It, is, is that the type of article that you're looking for for your magazine or for your publication? 
your newsletter, your online, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. And when they would say yes, we'd say, here you go. You know, and we just and and we made these people rock stars. And sometimes our name wasn't even in there. No. But no. the person, the person who did that, you know, he would uh, oh, in fact, got one right here. This is this is when you know I, I consulted for the International Housewares show a number of years ago. And uh and they, they they were a top 10 trade show, one of the largest in the United States. And we determined there were some issues with it. And we we figured that we had to reinvent that trade show. And 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 we wrote this, we wrote this article, and it's basically a case study, right? And it was published in Association Management Magazine. He was on the cover. It's it says it's written by him. See? It's great. It's great. <laughs> You know, you know um, the, the value of that thing is is enormous. Yeah. You know, I, I, I want to like pick your brain more about like, you know, we were talking about your dad, you know, and, and for those of you that aren't familiar again, you know, uh, co-creator of the, I got that right. Co-creator of the eight track tape player. Right. Um, I mean, it's just really fascinating uh, stuff in this, this whole thing. I mean, I, I grew up in marketing. That was my whole, that was my background, you know, in college, you know, background in marketing. So that's cool. It, it does. It does fascinate me. You're a fascinating guy. Um, I love this conversation. I don't want to give too much away. Stealing Genius is available in your newest book. Um, I'm going to put all of your information, Steve, a little bit more about your bio, a link directly to your site at rickykelman.com. So if you're listening on any platform or if you're watching, please visit my site, rickykelman.com, and uh, go to the podcast page, which you will see all the inform information about Steve Miller. Uh, Steve, you want to leave us with anything before we we bolt? Um, can I give him some? Yeah, you got something to give away? Yeah, why not? I'll give him some. Please, I'll him, please. You know, I'll, I'll give a, I'll give I'll give a tips uh article. You know, something like you know five, top five, top ten tips. I'll make it just right. for you, Ricky. And, All right. So uh, we, we, you put that in a link or something? Is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, I'll put it at. It'll be at beuncopyable dot com uh, slash. Uh, slash Ricky comment. Okay. And I'll put that link at my site. So it will be there. in Steve's bio on the site. Boom. You got it. You're going to get some free tips. Uh, yep. And you're, you're, you, you do, you always leave every time I'm on the phone with you. Um, every time we talk on a zoom call, I feel like you are giving me value and I hope I'm giving it back to you because I feel like I do, this guy is just always just throwing out ideas and I'm writing stuff down. And so I want to pay that back to you in some I way. So in I hope karma. I can, yeah, no, it, 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 definitely. You're putting it yeah, out there. I totally there. believe in karma. I, I love to help. Lo, love to help people. You know, and sometimes well, you know, and, and you know, Zig Ziglar also said. He said, if you help enough other people get what they want, you know, they will help you get what you want. So uh, I, I, we, we've lived I, by I'm that philosophy fan. for for years. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Zig Ziglar. I I think I wore out those cassette tapes. It was, driving it was such, to college. It was such yeah. an honor. That's one of the cool things of, of doing what we do is that if, if if you're any good at it then after a while you start to meet these people and uh you know all these people and some of them become good friends well i wouldn't say that zig and i were were, were great friends but we were we were good acquaintances and we yeah. broke bread together and, and stuff like that and, and it was one of the greatest honors of my life was knowing him uh, it's an honor to meet you get a chance to know you and your and your wife again if you uh, haven't caught on steve miller's wife Kay miller also an author my smoking uh, hot wife yeah, she that's that's what she's known by. That's what he calls her and to everybody in the world. That's that's not just a throw out. Yeah. So, um, hey, man, thanks so much. Please come back next book. I want I want to hear about it and uh, I want people to know. So thanks, Ricky. Great talking Going to you back. again. Likewise.